Welcome grade 12s to this session on organic molecules. Let us join Amira to discuss what we mean by organic molecules. What comes to mind when you hear the term organic? Do you imagine vegetables and fruit, plants, human bodies, animals, coal, wood? What about things like paint, plastic, the fuel in our buses and cars, perfume, paper, bread, and other foodstuffs like pasta, cheese, vinegar, margarine, and sugar. Yes, you'd be right. All these things and many more are organic compounds. This pen, my clothes, this desk, and virtually all the things on it. Remember that organic chemistry is the study of molecules containing carbon. An organic compound is one that contains carbon. The richest source of organic molecules is living things. A good example is DNA, a molecule inside your cells that uses the special bonding patterns of carbon and other atoms to store the information used to make up your body. In this way, carbon can store the building plan to make your hair dark or your toes short. All life as we know it would be impossible without carbon. In the past, the word organic referred to something from a living thing. Now we know that many manufactured substances are also organic. So all these things have some common characteristics. They all contain carbon and make use of the special bonding properties of carbon atoms. In this series of lessons about organic molecules, we'll look at how carbon makes chemical bonds, making it capable of forming so many different molecules. We'll see how carbon and hydrogen form the backbone of larger molecules and how the size and shape of the molecules can affect physical properties, like boiling and melting points. First of all, before we take a look at how carbon atoms bond, let's see why we are so interested in carbon. We find carbon in the middle of the second period on the periodic table. It is in group four, and this means that carbon has four valence electrons. This also means that for carbon to have a complete set of eight electrons, it must make four electron pairs or bonds. These bonds are with other atoms or even other carbon atoms. This is the reason why organic molecules bond and behave the way they do. There are a few compounds that contain carbon that are actually inorganic. For example, carbon dioxide, CO2, and the carbonates such as sodium carbonate. But let's go back to our presenter to find out more about organic compounds. Let's look at the characteristics of organic molecules first. You already know that each carbon atom can form four bonds. Carbon can bond with itself to form long chains and rings. Carbon can also make double or triple bonds with itself. And it can form ring shapes. Many lengths and shapes of carbon chains can be formed because of these characteristics of carbon. Imagine just how many types of organic molecules can be formed. Now, I'd like to show you some of the ways in which organic chemists show the structure of organic molecules. It's logical and easy. Just follow me each step of the way. To start with, when we draw the structure of a compound containing carbon, we must ensure that every carbon atom has four bonds to it. Here, for example, is methane, which consists of one carbon atom. Four bonds, all bonded to a hydrogen atom. Ethane works in the same way. Here are two carbon atoms each with four bonds and hydrogen atoms. In propane, we see that the three carbon atoms 
each have their usual four bonds and hydrogen atoms. When we draw the molecules in this way, we show their structure with the position of the atoms and the bonds. We call these two-dimensional drawings structural formulae. We can also write the chemical formula of organic molecules in the same way as other formulae, starting with carbon. We call this the molecular formula. It only lists the number of each type of atom, but does not tell us how they are arranged inside the molecule. The molecular formula for methane is therefore CH4. The molecular formula for ethane is C2H6. And that of propane is C3H8. So, to recap, this is the structural formula of ethane, while this is its molecular formula. Now that we know that carbon makes four bonds, it is easier to understand why carbon is present in more than 10 million different compounds. One of the things that makes carbon so special is that it forms bonds to itself to make chains. Notice how each of the carbon atoms still has four bonds to other atoms. Some of those bonds are between two carbon atoms. Now, we can always put the molecule together differently to make a new molecule with a different name and different properties. We call these groups of molecules isomers. Isomers are molecules that have the same molecular formula but different structural formula. This is very similar to building with bricks. Like carbon, the bricks and cement can be used in a different way to make different structures. A wall can be built in many different ways, using the same bricks and cement by simply combining them in different shapes. In the same way, isomers are different compounds built from exactly the same atoms. It can be tiring drawing in all the bonds and hydrogen atoms on carbon structures. Organic chemists sometimes use a different way of representing organic molecules without showing all the bonds. This type of representation is called a condensed structural formula. It still shows the number of each type of atom while keeping the order in which they are bonded. Let's look at the example and see how a two-dimensional structure can be written as a condensed structural formula. We start at one end, first writing the C symbol for the first carbon atom. Next, we write down the hydrogen atoms that are joined to it. The second C has an H attached as well as two CH3 groups. This means that one of the CH3 groups forms a branch or side chain off the main chain. If there is a branch or side chain, we place the symbols inside brackets in the condensed formula. See if you can write the condensed structural formula for these two molecules, ethene and propyne, something a bit different for you. The condensed molecular formula for ethene is CH2CH2, and for propyne, it is CH3CCH. Can you see that we will always know that there are double or triple bonds because of the smaller number of hydrogen atoms on each carbon? We can now see how to draw organic molecules and how they can be rearranged to make different molecules, remembering to keep four bonds to each carbon each time. Let's take a closer look at some of the more common groups or types of organic molecules that make up the backbone for more complex molecules. The first group of organic molecules we will look at are simple hydrocarbons. A hydrocarbon is a compound based on hydrogen and carbon. All of the molecules in this family are made up of chains of carbon. 
What special structural features do all these molecules have in common? Notice, each of these chains of carbon contains only single bonds between the carbon atoms. Organic molecules with the same structural features are called a homologous series. The homologous series of molecules with only single bonds between carbon atoms is called alkanes. Can you see any similarities between the word alkane and the names of the molecules in the picture? Look carefully. We have methane, ethane, propane, butane, pentane, hexane, heptanes, and octane. That's right. Alkanes all end in the letters A-N-E. This way, I know that if a molecule's name ends in "-ain", that the carbon atoms in the molecule are bonded with single covalent bonds. Throughout organic chemistry, you will see this relationship between the structure of the molecules and their names. One of our organic chemists is going to explain this to us. Hi, Philip. Please explain how organic chemists work out the names for the millions of organic molecules. Hello, Amira. It's wonderful to join you today. Yes, it really would be very difficult to give special names to all organic molecules. Lucky for us, a system to name them all was developed. The IUPAC naming system is a way to name any molecule. I'm sure we'll come across it throughout this series. This stands for the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemists. The IUPAC system works like this. In any carbon molecule, we first count the longest continuous carbon chain. This gives us the first part of the name, sometimes called the prefix. One carbon is meth, two carbons is eth, three carbons is prope, and so on. After five carbons, the Greek system of noting numbers takes over. You may recognize this from maths, where a hexagon has six sides. Seven is hept, and eight is oct. Once we have the prefix, we add an ending to the name which describes how the carbon atoms are bonded. Do you remember how the names of the alkanes ended? Of course, they all ended in the letters A, N, and E. Do you think you could draw a molecule of pentane on your own? Can you see? We start off by taking the first part of the name pentane, and pent means that our carbon chain is made up of five carbon atoms. We then join them up with single bonds between the carbon atoms because we see that the name ends in A, N, E. Don't forget that we are drawing a hydrocarbon, and that means that carbon needs four bonds. So fill in the remaining bonds around carbon with hydrogen atoms until each carbon has four bonds. There we have it, the structural formula for a molecule of pentane. This system will work every time because the same steps are used to name all organic compounds. I hope you'll use it often. Before we move on, let's have a look at some of the applications of alkanes in our everyday lives. Philip will show us a diagram of a fractional distillation column which is used to separate different alkanes that occur in crude oil. Here is a group of chemicals called naphtha with very low boiling points. Gasoline, paraffine oils, diesel oils, lubricating oils, fuel oils, and the residue here with the highest boiling point. Amazingly, we all know and probably use every one of these types of chemicals in our lives. The liquids called naphtha have a very low boiling point, which makes them highly flammable. For this reason, they are excellent fuels. The gasoline from the distillation column is used to make our petrol. Petrol has just the right boiling point to mix easily with air. This mixture burns inside the engine to produce the energy that we need for transport and industry. Diesel and paraffin are liquids that have much higher boiling points than gasoline. They need a much higher temperature to begin burning and this allows them to be stored and used more safely. Fractional distillation also produces much thicker substances like lubricating oils and waxes. These substances are very viscous. This means that they do not flow easily. 
often a high boiling point indicates that a substance may be viscous as well. Can you think why substances that do not boil very easily are often viscous? Substances like wax that have a very high boiling point have strong intermolecular forces. These forces make it very difficult for molecules to move past one another. This makes them more viscous. The product that comes out of the fractional distillation column at the bottom is tar or asphalt. You can see that this substance is very viscous. We use tar to make the roads. Without this substance, perhaps our roads and highways would be very different and transport would be extremely difficult. I hope you're convinced now. Oil products touch every part of our lives, from the roads we drive on to the petrol in cars and taxis, even parts of the pens, rulers, chairs, and paint in the classroom are made from oil products. These fossil fuels are all important fuels. This is because the combustion reaction of alkanes is highly exothermic. The combustion of alkanes, such as propane, results in the production of carbon dioxide and water as shown in this reaction equation. The reaction is exothermic. Now you should have a good overview of the whole subject of organic molecules. Let's recap what we have done in this lesson. We learned that carbon has a specific structure that enables it to form millions of compounds. We know that each organic compound can be represented by a structural formula and a molecular formula. We know that all the compounds in a homologous series have the same structural features. And isomers are compounds with the same molecular formula but different structural formula. We know how to name the alkanes. And lastly, we know that the alkanes are good fuels and they burn in oxygen to form carbon dioxide and water. These are really important basic concepts, so please go through this lesson again if you want to consolidate the ideas. Grade 12s, you'll find more information about organic molecules at www.mindset.co.za forward slash learn. Remember to try some of the questions in the task video too. For now, goodbye.